Well over a decade on from the launch of the original Dead Island, its long-awaited sequel is finally around the corner. After numerous delays and a tortured development cycle that saw the project changing studios more than a few times, Dead Island 2 is now just days away from launch, which means of course that the excitement surrounding the action RPG is continuing to mount by the day. In the lead up to its release, then we're going to look back at the series up until this point and recap its entire story, told across Dead Island 1, its Rider White campaign DLC, and Dead Island Riptide. Here, however, we'll only be focusing on the former two. Without further ado, let's get started. Dead Island, which is set on the fictional island of Benoit, features four playable protagonists, former football star Logan Carter, one-hit wonder rap artist Sam B, ex-cop Perna Jackson, and resort employee and spy Jean May. But since you can go through the story as any of the four, going forward we'll be referring to them as just the heroes. Dead Island kicks off with the heroes attending a party that's being thrown by Sam B at a hotel, which is trucking along as any party would. At first, anyway. The heroes go to sleep at the end of the night, but when they awaken, they find themselves in a world that's been completely turned upside down. The party they find out has been overrun by zombies, and though the cause of the outbreak is completely unknown, they do find aid in the form of a mysterious voice coming from the hotel's PA system, which attempts to guide them through the mess. That doesn't last long, though, because they end up getting knocked unconscious by one of the infected. When they come to again, they find themselves in a beach shack away from the hotel, surrounded by other survivors, and this is where the game's story really kicks off. Upon learning that the entire island has been overrun by zombies due to the mysterious outbreak, the heroes and the survivors they're with realize that they don't have enough food or supplies to help them survive much longer. While at the same time, they're also determined to get their hands on a powerful radio, using which they might be able to get in touch with the voice that was guiding them through the hotel speakers. To get access to all of that, they decide they need to head to the main city on the island called Moresby. To give themselves the best chance of survival on the journey to the city, they head back to the hotel and get their hands on an armored truck, which they then take to a nearby mechanic, hoping to have it decked out even further so that it's essentially a tank in all but name. The mechanic agrees to help them, but in exchange he asks that they take his daughter Jin with them, since he's been bitten by a zombie and will soon turn. The heroes agree, and with Jin now in their company, they head out to Moresby. In Moresby, and throughout the course of Dead Island's campaign, the heroes come across several groups of survivors and various factions, and the first that they meet has taken refuge in a church and is being led by a woman known as Mother Helen. After first helping the church group out in order to help them survive, they are told then by Mother Helen that if they want to get their hands on more resources, they're going to have to go through the city's sewers to reach the more affluent parts of town, since the bridge that used to lead there was blown up by the military in order to contain the outbreak. Since they have no other course of action, that's exactly what the heroes do. After trekking through the sewers, the heroes arrive at Moresby's town hall, but there's not much luck to be had there for them either. They're told by the mayor himself that they can spare no food and resources for other survivors on the island though they do catch a break when they're informed that they can try their hand at a nearby supermarket, which unfortunately has been overtaken by a gang of looters. The heroes head to the supermarket, fight their way through hordes of looters, and finally, with some long overdue success under their belts, make it out of there with some resources in tow. When they return to the town hall though, they find that it's been overrun by zombies, and so they head back to Mother Helen and her group back at the church. There, however, their problems continue to mount. They're told that Jin was captured by a local gang in an attempt to supply the nearby police station, even though she was told to stay put. That, of course, means they now have to head there and rescue her, which they managed to do, even if it's not without a few hiccups and plenty of brutal fighting along the way. With Jin safely rescued, they head back to the church, supply it with the supplies they acquired from the supermarket, and then head back to the hotel, where they hope to use the powerful radio on the roof to get in contact with the mysterious voice again. When they do use the radio, they learn that the voice is Ryder White, a colonel in the Benoit Island Defense Force, or the BIDF. Ryder tells them that he's holed up on a prison island in the bay close to their location, and that he can help get them out of Benoit, if they do something for him in exchange. White's wife, as it turns out, has been infected, 
and he tells them that if they can find a man named Moen in a nearby jungle, he will take them to a nearby laboratory where scientists are working on a cure. The heroes aren't entirely convinced by his promise, but seeing as they have no other options and Ryder seems to be their only way out of this whole mess, they agree. And so they head out into the jungle in hopes of seeking out Moen, only to find themselves in a village populated by a native tribe. The village, which is led by a man named Mututero, has been under attack by a dangerous warlord, Afrin, and the heroes are told by Mututero that if they eliminate Afrin on their behalf, he will help them find Moen. The heroes agree, and what ensues is a fierce fight against Afrin and his followers when they raid his base, which culminates in the death of the warlord. Following that, Matutero agrees to hold up his end of the deal and takes them to Moen, who in turn takes them to the lab. It's here that Dead Island reveals more details about the zombie outbreak, and also how it can be prevented. It turns out that the virus that caused the outbreak originated from a mutated version of an indigenous disease. To formulate a cure, the scientists in the lab need a tissue sample from native mummy, so they can study the virus in its pre-mutation form. To that end, the heroes head to a nearby tomb, where after plenty of trials and tribulations, they're able to retrieve the tissue sample, while also rescuing a native woman named Yurima, who, as it turns out, is immune to the zombie virus. Things, however, quickly go wrong, as they usually do in Dead Island. The lab is soon overrun as well, and the resulting outbreak of zombies ends up killing all of the scientists. By this time, however, a cure has been formulated, and with the cure and Yurima in tow, the heroes finally head to the prison island to meet Ryder White, and hopefully get the hell out of Benoy. At the prison, however, things continue to descend into chaos. Amidst a riot and an uprising, and the resulting zombie outbreak, the heroes make their way through the prison to rendezvous with Ryder. Though as soon as they get to the point where Ryder is supposed to meet them, they're gassed and knocked unconscious. When they awaken, they find themselves in the company of a prisoner named Kevin, who tells them that Ryder has betrayed them, gassed them, and stole the cure from them. Now he's on his way to the prison rooftop, where he plans to board a chopper and escape, following which he will order a nuclear strike on Benoy to obliterate all zombies and survivors on the island. The heroes make their way through the prison, fighting their way through an ocean of chaos, and finally arrive at the roof just in the nick of time, which is where Dead Island's dramatic conclusion takes place. Ryder's wife, as it turns out, has completely turned, though he has her in restraints and still hopes to bring her back from the depths of the infection. He tells him that he plans on delivering the cure to the scientists in Australia, who can supposedly use it to mass produce a vaccine, though things quickly spiral out of control. Jin releases Ryder's wife, who bites him and infects him. Instinctively, Ryder shoots and kills her for good, and in retaliation, shoots and kills Jin as well. To prevent himself from turning, he injects himself with the cure, only to be turned into a monstrous zombie himself. How? We'll get to that in a bit. In the here and now, the heroes take on Ryder in a final battle and are ultimately able to kill him, following which they board the chopper with Kevin and Yurema and escape from Benoit at long last. That's where the base game ends, though the story isn't over. Dead Island's Ryder White campaign focuses on the BIDF Colonel, and ends up recontextualizing not only his character, but also the story of the base game itself, with many mysteries and loose ends now resolved. We won't be going into too much detail on the exact sequence of events throughout this campaign though, and we'll instead only be focusing on its most crucial narrative details. The most crucial of these is the fact that Ryder White, contrary to what it seems like in the base game, isn't Dead Island's main antagonist after all. It's actually the seemingly unassuming prisoner named Kevin, who, as it turns out, is actually the terrorist hacker known as Karen. Ryder was assigned to Benoit by his superiors after it was deemed that they couldn't completely trust him with the most crucial missions, and he was tasked with containing the outbreak, which involved not only blowing up the bridges throughout the island, but also killing the civilian population if needed. At the same time, it's also revealed that most of the time the heroes thought they were speaking with Ryder over the radio, they were actually speaking with Karen. Karen, it turns out, was also manipulating Ryder and making him do his bidding under false promises of providing him with the cure for his infected wife. It's also revealed that it was him who orchestrated the attack on the lab that led to the deaths of all the scientists. While it is, of course, him who turns the heroes against Ryder towards the end of the base game, when he's still posing as Kevin. And what exactly is his ultimate objective? As you may have guessed, he wants to stop a cure from being formulated. 
That's because he actually intended to use Irema, who is immune but still carries a dormant version of the zombie virus, as a walking time bomb and spread the disease all over the world. The cure that the heroes got from the lab also wasn't a cure at all. It was actually an enhanced version of the virus itself, which is why Ryder turned into a mutated infected when he injected himself with it. Of course, all of this ends up factoring into the story of Dead Island's follow-up, the standalone expansion named Dead Island Riptide, though that's something we'll be getting to in a later feature. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.